What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to be talking about the new Gerard Butler disaster movie, Greenland. The film was directed by Rick Roman Waugh and also stars Marina Bakarin and Roger Dale Floyd. Now Greenland was one of my most anticipated movies of 2020. Before COVID even happened, when all of these slate of movies were still going to come out in 2020, Greenland was still in my top 10 most anticipated because I just wanted a movie to just sit back and just have a blast. I'm a huge um, Gerard Butler fanboy ever since 300. I'm a huge disaster movie fanboy because there's no expectations in disaster movies. The dialogue is going to be terrible. You know that the character arcs are going to be terrible and generic. You know that the characters themselves are all going to be generic and just carbon copies of every other disaster movie that's ever existed. But nothing matters because you just want to follow a group of people trying to escape the end of the world. And that's something that's just so fun, so unique to the disaster movie genre. And I'm here to tell you that that's not Greenland. <laughs> if you are familiar with Rick Roman Waugh's work, specifically Snitch, this is a director that cares deeply about the human element. He cares deeply about the family element and that's exactly what Greenland is about. It's not your typical disaster movie. It's not focused on the explosions and the deaths of people all across the world. This film is centered around this one family and really what life is like for them and interacting with other people trying to survive an extinction level event. So going into Greenland, I highly recommend that you temper your expectations. This is not going to be like Geostorm. It's not going to be like San Andreas. It's not going to be like 2012, where the spectacle of the disaster is the core of this film, because it is not. So temper your expectations going to this film, knowing that it's more of a human piece. It's more of an action drama again about this family trying to survive the apocalypse and what people are like during an apocalypse. Without giving major spoilers away, the easiest way that I can describe this movie is to compare it to The Walking Dead. And I'll explain that. So in the zombie world, right, whenever it comes to movies or anything like that, the zombies are always the main point of the universe. It's always the main point of the story that's happening. Of course, you always get the obligatory looting scene. There's always trash people everywhere, but the core of the movie is always about the zombies and how to escape the zombies and how do we survive from the zombies. But with The Walking Dead, what we've learned is that the real terrors of this apocalypse are human beings. The zombies are definitely what caused the apocalypse, but the true dangers of this new world are human beings, are people. Because people are already terrible, they're already garbage. And when it's the end of the world and you have something that they want, they will do anything. They'll kill you, they will do anything it takes for them to survive. And that's the same thing with Greenland. It steps away from what disaster movies usually are, which again is focusing on the spectacle of the disaster. And the extinction level event, the comet, is really just the catalyst to what we're going to see with everything else. So in Greenland, it's really about this family and it's really about how terrible people can be during an extinction level event. And I don't want to go into spoilers, so I know that sounds pretty vague, and that's why I use the Walking Dead scenario, because I feel like that's a good explanation of what you can expect. It's more character-driven instead of what's causing the actual apocalypse. Now, I will say, if you have seen the trailers, forget everything that you've seen from the trailers. The trailers sell this movie as if it's just a regular basic disaster movie where you're just going to see some cheesy one-liners, which you still will get, but you're not going to get that with this movie. Again, it's more character-driven. It's about this family and about the people around them and the terrible things that people will do when they also want to survive. So the comet itself 
it's actually just in the background because it's just the catalyst. And it's because I watched those trailers that kind of ruined the first hour for me because I was sitting there and I'm like, well, when does the cool stuff happen? When do we get into the disaster? When do things start exploding? When do we get into the crazy CGI events? And then another thing is, mild spoiler, by the way, all of the explosions, all of the comet impacts, all of the fragments from the comet, it's all done via TV footage, much like how in the first Godzilla movie, you only saw Godzilla 90% of the time through monitors. Now, I will say, after figuring out what this movie is really about and what this director was actually trying to say and do with this movie... It ended up working for me because if you or I were in an extinction level event, the same events of this movie, we wouldn't be able to see the impact points from the comets from the camera's perspective. That's something we see in disaster movies all the time. Whenever we see the damage, it's, al it's always from the camera's perspective. But in this movie, we find out everything with the characters as they find out. So if you and I were in this situation, we would find out from watching TV. We would find out from Amber Alerts on our phone, people recording stuff on social media, on the news. So in this movie, that's how the family that we're following gets all of this information. And yes, to some people, that might seem uneventful, but for a movie that's about these characters and it's a real human story we should experience everything that they're experiencing exactly the same way that they do so once i realized that that was something that i really really appreciated about the film the director wants to take the audience and truly take you on this roller coaster ride with this family you never see anything else in other parts of the world from the camera's perspective it's all about gerard butler and his family i really love that about this film that's something that i really really appreciated now to get into my negatives i do feel like the film is too long it's two hours long and it really really doesn't need to be two hours long i think the director takes way too much time trying to prove to audiences that people are garbage and that people would do absolutely anything to save their own ass in an extinction level event like this, which is something that I don't feel needed to be driven home so much. So me personally, I would have cut out at least 15 minutes of this movie and get it down to about 175. Because again, there's just 15 minutes of fluff just showing you extra stuff about people being terrible. You could have done the exact same thing in an hour and 45 minutes, and I would have felt the exact same way. So the film runs the risk of just feeling way too long. There's a lot of really, really cringy dialogue as well, but those are my only real negatives. Temper your expectations. Do not let the trailers give you any type of indication of what this movie is really about, because what it's really about is about this family trying to navigate and survive the end of the world. Again, that was something that I really like where it's not like Armageddon, it's not like Deep Impact where there's a possibility of the world not being destroyed. There's a real sense of dread with this movie, a real sense of despair. And that's something that the score as well drives home. And all of the actors do a really good job in this movie. And that's, again, something that I really, really appreciated. And again, to bring it back to The Walking Dead comparison, there's actually an actor from The Walking Dead who plays a similar character from The Walking Dead, the exact same character that he played in The Walking Dead, because this is a similar scenario. Again, it really is more about how humans treat each other when the world's ending, instead of just the world-ending elements themselves. Guys, I had a lot of fun talking about this movie. I can't say that it's a movie that I would watch over and over again, because... I feel like I've seen this type of thing before. Again, I don't need you to drive home to me that people are terrible. So I don't see the need to rewatch a two-hour movie 
about people being terrible. Now, I don't want to discourage you from purchasing Greenland. I definitely recommend that you rent it, buy it, whatever you want to do. Check it out and see how you feel about it yourself. It's just me personally. I don't see the point in re-watching this movie but I do still think that it's a good movie. I know that may sound confusing, but go see Greenland. Let me know what you thought about the film in the comments below. Let me know what you thought about my review. Make sure you guys like the video and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. And I will see you guys on the next one.